Epiphany from a Greek word meaning intense appearance. Phanein means to appear in Greek, and epi, which means on top of, is a way of intensifying. James Joyce, the great uh, 20th century Irish novelist. And you know in his famous autobiographical novel, A Portrait of the Artist as a Young Man, because he said his vocation would be to report epiphanies when he saw them. Now, his great example, and you go to that book to find it, it's one of the most beautiful scenes in, in 20th century literature. Joyce spies this young woman standing off of the, the shore uh, in Dublin. And then he, he describes her in her beauty. And she's gazing out to sea. And then she turns to him. And for a while, she, she takes in his gaze. And she looks out again to the open sea. And then the young character says, oh, oh, heavenly God. Well, that was a woman that became his wife eventually in, in real life. But the point was seeing her that day was an epiphania. It was this intense showing forth. And Joyce was so impressed by that. He said, look, I found my vocation as a writer is to notice epiphanies and then to describe them. Now, Joyce was a great literary genius. He was able to describe them in these extraordinary ways. But think of someone too, like, like Flannery O'Connor. I think her vocation was very similar. She said, my books are all about the breakthrough of grace. Now, usually refused, she said. But she, like Joyce, was noticing these epiphanies, these moments of intense manifestation is meant to signal to us that we should be attentive in a similar way to these moments of breakthrough when something shows itself so powerfully that ultimately it speaks to us of God. Now, I'm going to give some examples from my own life. So epiphanen means something that's appeared, but in a very intense way. Not just getting our attention, but revealing something of enormous significance. That's what epiphany is about. Maybe you've heard these stories before, but they're important to me just to show what I mean by this epiphany. The first one, I've told the story many times, but as a little kid at Fenwick High School outside Chicago, and hearing for the first time about St. Thomas Aquinas and one of his arguments for God's existence, I took it in, but it was more than just, oh, another lesson. Isn't that mildly interesting? No, for me, it was like an epiphany of truth. It was a hyper intense manifestation of the truth. It so galvanized me that it sent me on a kind of mission. And it's no joke to say I've never really left that path to this moment recording these words. It's because as a young kid, I had an epiphany this manifestation of truth. You know, a second one, it happened around the same time. Once the Lord breaks through into your life, savor that moment and follow it all the way to the source of what is true and good and beautiful. That's the best way to respond to an epiphania. I don't think anything in, in that whole process of filming that series impressed me more than that. It was an epiphany. It was a showing forth of something of extraordinary power. I'll give you one more. Um, this was, oh gosh, 25 years ago now. Well, see, we, we have these experiences too. We can't control them. I, I mean, not, not one of those experiences I just described is something that I could control. I could make it happen again. No, it was like a grace to an epiphany.
for the wise men, of course, it was first the star. That was this extraordinary appearance. But see, much more than that, the point of the story is it wasn't the star that was the real epiphany. It was this baby. They went looking for a king, and they find this little child. That was the epiphania. That was the extraordinary appearance. Thank you.